to Good Morning Maine. I'm here with Emma Swift. She's a LCPC, a licensed counselor um, locally here, and we're here to talk about kind of a tough conversation today. We're talking about managing grief. There's all sorts of things that would cause grief. It's something that we all experience. Emma, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Absolutely. So um, what do you think are some methods to manage grief? Because it's already, it's something everybody goes through. For sure. I think um, just normalizing the fact that we all experience grief, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of common misconceptions in our society about grief. One being that we have these like set stages. Yeah. And that they are just kind of cut and dry. Like we go right. through this stage and then we go through denial and then we go through anger. And it really doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. We used to think it did because we could see a pattern. We noticed that people would get angry. We noticed people would get sad. We noticed that they would have these like phases of emotions, right? But we didn't really fully understand like what that actually was. And it didn't account for the fact that everyone experiences grief in a different way and everyone's brain processes it differently, mm. right? And so we have to make sure that we, I tell people all the time, and like it comes in waves. And that wave might be filled with anger. It might be filled with grief. It might be filled with sadness. You might feel a little empty. You might feel nothing because your brain and your body is trying to separate from the pain, right. right? So that wave might include a whole bunch of things in no particular order or pattern. Right. And so I just like to normalize that for people. I'm like, there is no set like, hey, I'm still angry. I thought I was past that. Like, nope, that's okay to be angry. Like yeah. you, you need to allow yourself to acknowledge what you're feeling as it's coming. And in particular, when something awful happens, you got to let yourself feel it. Yeah. in whatever way that is most safe and most effective for you. Yeah, and speaking from personal experience, I'm somebody capable of immense joy. Mm. I'm also capable of a lot of anger. And I realize when I dig a little bit deeper, oh, that's sadness. Mm -hmm. That's really what it is. So anger is actually what we call a secondary emotion. Yeah. I have a lot of spiels. <laughs> one of my, one of my <laughs> spiels okay. is about emotions and yeah. about anger. Anger is what we call a secondary emotion. Yeah. There is always something that is underneath that fuels the anger. Mm -hmm. But for a lot of people, they weren't taught to deal with or identify whatever that underlying emotion was. And so the secondary thing is anger. And that's just either easier or all that they know. Yeah. And so I always ask people, like, what is under the anger? Is it fear? Is it shame? Is it sadness? Is it, what is it? Mm -hmm. What drives the anger? Because if you can get down to the, is it grief? Yeah. <laughs> can you get down to the root of what is fueling that anger? Because then once you address whatever's fueling it, the anger's not there as much. Right. What is your advice for folks who maybe are just realizing or who are struggling to grapple with how they're managing their own grief? Um, talk about it. Find someone, even if it's not a professional, like a friend. Yeah. Um, I had a client the other day, and she told me that she was terrified to tell her friends how much she was struggling, like her yeah. friends. And I was like, OK, like you don't want to tell them that you're sad. And you don't want to tell them that you're struggling. Like, and so what would we say to them if they were mean to you about that? And I might have used some profanities, but I was like, <laughs> we don't care. We do not care yeah. if people look at us differently because of our feelings, and particularly when we are struggling. Right. If, if someone looks at you differently because you are having a human experience, they don't matter. They're no friend of yours. No. Those yeah. who mind don't, those, oh no, I'm going to get it wrong. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> those, uh, those who mind don't matter. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Those who mind that, they don't matter. Those who matter don't mind right. when you are just experiencing those human emotions and yep. trying to reach out. Connection right. is key, I think, when you're struggling with how you're dealing with your own grief. And that can sometimes cause more grief, but you're getting closer to being able to be better. Because yeah. if you're weeding out those people right. maybe who don't care about you, they gotta go. Right, right. Yeah. If they can't be there for you when you are struggling, then they're right. probably not the person you need in your life right, right now. Is there a helpline people can call as, as maybe a last effort yeah, here? Yeah, there's actually a really cool national hotline that came out. Yep. Um, it's 988, you can dial 988 nationwide, anytime, 24-7, okay. to be connected with crisis resources. Yep. Um, and then there's also our local statewide crisis, um, which is 1-888-568-568. 1112 and that connects you to community health and counseling crisis resources um, right here in Maine and that's for adults and children 
Um, and then community health and counseling also has walk-in. Okay. Um, they have some walk-in hours. I don't know their exact hours. I but. hate to cut you off. I will link that when we post yeah, this. Absolutely. But Emma, we're about out of time. I really appreciate you having absolutely. this tough conversation with me this morning. Thank you so much, Emma. Of course. We'll send it over to Devin Biggs for our full weather forecast.